Hi there, this is Mark Edelman, speech-language pathologist, and welcome to the teaching of talking. I know there's a little bit of a jitter in this video, but I typically do these videos when I'm out walking, and I try to kill two birds with one stone, getting my daily exercise and also creating content for you. So please forgive if occasionally this might be a, a, a little bit jittery. If it is for you, you could just kind of close your eyes and listen for a few minutes as I want to just tell you a quick story about lyrics and music. And it's just very, very brief and I'll make it short. And um, so I was sitting at home this morning and I was trying to recall the lyrics of a very special piece of music. And I kept on repeating it over and over and in my head, and I just wasn't getting it right. <laughs> and I, so, I, so, I, so I was thinking to myself, man, Mark, uh, do you have a problem? And so, uh, but it, it was a piece of music and the lyrics that I had always known very well. But this morning, for some reason, it wasn't there when I was just thinking about the lyrics. I wanted to write down the lyrics. And by golly, I tried three or four times and it just didn't come. So then the thought came to me, and the thought was, why don't you just go ahead and sing it out loud? And if you do that, the lyrics will probably come to you. So that's exactly what I did. I sang it out loud, and immediately all the lyrics were there. And as I was singing out the lyrics, uh, I repeated it a couple of times so that I could also capture uh, the lyrics uh, in the written word. Uh, so, you know, after that experience, I thought about it. And I thought that speech and speech therapy for aphasia uh, has some very similarities to what I personally experienced this morning. And that was that there are songs and there are lyrics, things that we've memorized and we've said or sung hundreds of times. And if someone were to ask us to just say what the lyrics are, it would be very difficult to do that. However, when you sing it, or when you put the lyrics with music, they come. Okay, so let's say we know that. But the next thought was that actual speaking is not like that at all. Actual speaking doesn't necessarily need the regurgitation of a song for lyrics. Talking is not singing. Talking is not repeating back memorized uh, pieces of music or lyrics or poems or pledges or anything like that. Speaking is taking a thought and then constructing, what, what is it that I want to say? And then what has to happen is the thought has to come. And then when the thought comes, we naturally speak what the thought is. But usually it's very automatic. And it is a constructive process. It's sort of like constructing a house, okay? You think about uh, what you want to build, then you make a plan, and then you do it. Well, it's the same thing in 
verbal speech and language. You think about what you want to say, you plan what you want to say, and then you say it. But, but that all happens at a rather unconscious level. Now those with aphasia, they have to uh, think about what they want to say, and then they have to think about all the words that are in the utterance they want to say. Then they have to think about the sequence of the words. Then they have to think about the verbal tenses and the grammar of the response. And that is totally diametrically different than regurgitating lyrics from a song that you may have sung hundreds and hundreds of times. So this is Mark Edelman. You know, music therapy is good. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, I had a program where I spent eight hours a day with people who had aphasia. And one hour of that day, we would do music. And it was fun and it was invigorating. And it was good for motor speech because they had lots of practice saying lyrics and things like this. But you know, after we got finished singing, uh, there wasn't really any big difference in talking. Uh, we had a great time. They were able to recall the lyrics to many of the songs, to many of the simple lyrics. They were able to do that. But remember that that's not what verbal speech is. Verbal speech and language, remember, and I'm, I'm gonna conclude on this. Verbal speech and language is either you have a question or you have a comment to make, okay? Now, when you have a question or a comment, you have to go inside your brain. You have to think about the words that you want to use to uh, say whatever it is that you want to say. And again, you have to think about the words. You have to think about the order of the words. You have to think about the grammar of the words. You have to think about the articulation of the words. It's very complex. It's not automatic. It's not regurgitating lyrics that you've uh, sung hundreds and hundreds of times. So on that, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, thank you for visiting us. If you found this little video insightful, please give us a thumbs up and um, down below this video, there's a whole lot of information about the teaching of talking. Uh, we have a special sale going on uh, for the teaching of talking online training course. And that's going to be on through the end of the month. And then at the end of the month, that sale is going to go away and that's half off. And uh, we're also uh, developing right now a seminar for Las Vegas uh, in uh, February and March 2020. One is on apraxia and one is on aphasia. So there's information down there below if you're interested. So uh, I hope you've liked this video and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to check underneath, give us a thumbs up, uh, join us, get on our mailing list. That link is down there underneath also. And uh, this has been very enjoyable to share this message with you today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.